leave the child and the child goes, oh, mom, dad, I better follow. And that's my perspective. I think if we take full self-responsibility for our own health and our own healing, and we just leave, the doctors are going to follow us because they won't have any clients. Thank you, Dawn. And I think Uma wants to share a thought as well. I think it's a very important uh, topic to address. And I think already a lot of talk has been done on how to educate the health professionals. But there's another aspect, sometimes we forget that the patients or clients have a choice also. So if their awareness improves, like now almost everyone knows yoga can help and they'll force the doctor to sometimes teach them meditation or yoga practices. So they have a choice. So if we spread the awareness at the general level and once the patient knows I have an option, they can also uh, seek the right health care. So we need to work on that much more in India, I think, than in the West. Thank you, Dr. Uma. And I think Dr. Uma very beautifully summarized a lot of what our panelists were talking over here, that there is a need for awareness, and we do need to promote it as much with the kind of techniques and the kind of trainings that we are all talking about. And I think it needs to be integrated as a part of the medical fraternity and the medical hospitals available so that at least a choice exists. At least in India, there is very little choice being given on a platform to the patient or the client. I think once we're able to give them and they take the informed choice, things are going to be much smoother and much more directional. With this esteemed team of um, energy medicine, doctors, specialists, experts, we will continue the panel. But at this point of time, I think a lot of us have a lot of thoughts and questions to come to our panel with. This is, my name is Professor K. Ravindran. This, is, this question is for all the panelists. The basic problem in this whole universe is psychosomatic disease. 90% people are suffering with psychosomatic disease. All the physical, this one is extension of that only. As Dr. Rightly said, when we have an accident, we need that other thing. But when it comes to psychosomatic and extending to all other diseases, don't you think that non-understanding of basic fundamental consciousness which exists in the whole universe is not understood by majority of the people? One. Second thing is concept of understanding mind and life energy is the fundamental in life. This has been not addressed in Western science. At least as a quantum medicine practitioner, is it not our duty to take up this in a very scientific manner like uh, Dr. Goswami, People, we need more integrated doctors like Goswami to take this to the medical fraternity to understand the fundamental concept of consciousness which exists in the whole universe. So I want the answer from you, why mind is not being defined by ourselves? Mind is nothing but psychic extension of the life force and consciousness is, is the present everywhere. So if this understanding comes, our uh, quantum engineers or quantum doctors can take this forward, uh, much forward. So scientific fraternity will not have any quarrel with us because this is two sides of the same kind. Spirituality or either religion and the science because there is a huge missing gap that has to be bridged by Scientists like us, so you are uh, Goswami only. Thank you. Dr. Sara, who's here with a question. Good afternoon, all. Uh, since we are talking about the university now coming up over here, and uh, as a doctor myself, would enroll for the same, and then when we are mentoring for others to join us, I would like to know from you all, what would be the limitations, if any, that we are asked that we would be able to or would have to answer the people whom we would need to get into the quantum? What are the kind of limitations that we would have? Like Dr. Don Paris said, that if there is an emergency or an accident, of course we need a surgeon or we need the allopathic treatment. 
So what are our limitations as quantum healers where we can draw a line? You know, as a homeopath, I know where I need to draw a line. So in quantum, is there a limitation that we would have to follow? I think a very uh, valuable question. And I, I would like to just answer that quickly um, because I, I do address that in, when I teach classes. And I talk about it in terms of time. So it depends on how much time a person has, which mode of therapy you want to apply. If you have a long time, then apply the least amount of pressure. If you have a short amount of time to live, you want to use the hammer sledgehammer method. Yeah? And then you've got a gradation in between that. that. That's how I've addressed that question. It's a very good question. When to refer to another practitioner or a more denser method. It all has to do with vibrations. And tomorrow in my workshop I'll go through that. The layers of vibration and which modalities of medicine apply to each one of those levels of vibration and how much time that takes from the, the most highest vibration down into the physical manifested world. As things go down into the physical world, they slow down in vibration, so you need to address things at that level uh, when they're in a very slow vibration. But if you have more time, you can address them at a higher vibration and allow that trickle-down effect to take effect, and that produces the most amount of healing. So the chronic ailments, we think uh, we can definitely just take the quantum as the answer? Or would we have limitations in the quantum too? I mean, in the chronic? I haven't seen any limitations as long as you have enough time. Thank you. Yeah. A um, little bit addition. You are basically, uh, Don is completely right. The emergency and then vital energy medicine is relatively short term. Mental takes very long time. I was just talking to a very impressive conversation I had with a homeopathic physician who is at the conference. Now, he treats schizophrenia uh, with homeopathy first because, uh, you know, basic problem of schizophrenics, of course, and many other mental diseases is that you cannot meditate, you cannot apply some of the techniques that we are talking about. So what to do? If you treat with homeopathy first, then uh, immediately the vital energy part is taken care of. And that slows them down enough for them to meditate, for them to be accessible to mental techniques. So this is a good example of what he's saying. Similarly, the physical may be necessary, of course not for schizophrenia, because the physical will mess up the brain so much that you cannot treat the same person really. So uh, for mental disease, one has to be more careful about applying physical medicine because they really mess up the system itself, mind itself. But uh, vital always safely can be engaged. So we, uh, I agree basically with uh, allopathy being emergency medicine except that proviso, that we should never use allopathy for disease which is connected to the very organ that the medicine will affect. Because the mor medicine will modify the organ and then the person is not the same person anymore. Um, with that proviso, like surgery, it's essential to apply first before you apply the rest of it because the person will die otherwise, right? So we have to use our common sense, but the general order is detected by what homeopaths call Herring's Law. It is true that the first things first, the um, physical symptoms, vital, and then mental works better. Thank you. You want the last word? Oh, you go, you go. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> that's a very, very good question. Uh, you see, you ask the question in terms of, in term of disease treatment. When we trained, and this is why education training is important. The common sense that is speaking, Dr. Goswami. As we train people to be a quantum doctor, integrative doctor, we learn another way to look health instead of disease so the at the end of the day you know we don't recommend to our practitioner our healer or doctor to to act like medical doctor and pretend they do treatment they treat cancer and so on very important and this is why you know it's, it's, it's 
needs common sense, but common sense needs also information and knowledge, number one. Number two, uh, I lost my... <laughs> Talking of what are some of the... Um yeah, let me, let, let me because my mind is going where somewhere. You the yeah, draw, where you draw the line. So the uh, information is very important, not acting like a doctor, not, not acting in terms of treatment. And then, you see, because I have the two training. If I train like a medical doctor, the client or the patient walk in my office. I have very particular reflex. I want to make a diagnose, as I explained ulterior in my conference, I want to find what's wrong with that person. There is a protocol. This mind of thinking has to change. When the client walk in the, in the, in the office of a holistic, not holistic, but a quantum integrative doctor, now you start to think in terms of potentiality. What can be done improve or bring this individual at its full potential? What can be done at the level of the bio physical, emotional, spiritual? So because changing these factor, the disease disappear by itself. So you're not fighting like a disease, you're not acting like a doctor. You're acting totally with a different perspective. This is the key there. So we don't want our doctor be like acting like doctor, but acting like teacher, guiding them to, ref, to, to be at, their, at that full potentiality. Because in society, people think, you know, okay, I don't have any pain, I'm not sick. But you know, if you go to the stats and if you look around, 75% may have functional disease. They are, they are not at their full potential, they are tired, they don't like, they wake up in the morning, they have a little pain here and there, they go to see the doctor, they are not ready to have a diagnosis, but because they are, they are functional, they think they are healthy. The, the, whole, the, the quantum integrative doctor will address that, reverse, bring the people. So it's not, not anymore now a question of curing, treating. There is, it's not a risk to say, okay, uh, how you draw the line, emergency, it's medicine, non-emergency. No, it's more complex than that. Because sometimes you have to work, this is what I was looking a few minutes ago, you have to work in team with the medical doctor. You know, there is a, it's not, because we have seen that too in the history of evolution of holistic medicine. People will say, you know what, the, this, uh, this medicine is bad, you uh, quit all this and be, take everything naturally, it's, and it could be like a disaster. You need some, most, when conditions are even chronic or even acute, and you're not in a, necessarily in an emergency room, you need to work in team with medical doctor. I recommend all the time to my graduate, the first thing you do when you start to practice, get friend with the family doctor in the community. Go and join, you know, get, get connection because you have to team with them. Integrative medicine is not one side quantum medicine and the other side the medical doctor. It's both working together. It's expanding their the understanding about health. And, and this, is, this is the key there, because when you ask the question, it's like, you know, where we draw the line? It's very hard to draw the line. And, and you need a common sense, and to develop that common sense, you have to be around of people who has dealt with this kind of condition. Thank you. Well, theoretically speaking, we as uh, quantum energy medicine practitioners should not have any limitations because what we do, we accelerate and improve natural healing. Natural healing works for everything. So theoretically speaking, we should not have any lines. However, we as human beings and as a professionals who are licensed in a certain particular state or country, we need to protect ourselves. And what we tell our practitioners, we recommend to them, first of all, look if you can get in, into any conflict with the conventional medicine. And if you did not manage to get, be, become friend with the family doctor, look what are you getting yourself into. Don't, treat, don't go into cancer industry. You're going to be shot, literally, in, at least in North America. Don't go into something like diabetes and start you know, taking the prescription of insulin and say don't take any insulin. So think through 
what are you recommending your client? Not because you cannot recommend it, but because it can get you in the conflict with the, with the conventional medicine. So if you cannot make friends with the doctor, be very careful what you're recommending. That's first. Yeah. But the second, remember we were talking, uh, who was, was at my talk, uh, the first talk, we were talking about us being coherent systems and our clients being less coherent. We are blending our energy with theirs. And at certain point on time, you getting the incoherencies. So you are getting a little bit out of balance, a little bit out of line. Look what, how much you can handle. Because there are some systems that you literally cannot process the information and become coherent yourself. So you will be sick for several days. We, we've seen that happening. So uh, assess who are you dealing with if you can handle the condition. And if you can't, don't do it or refer someone. And the last that we suggest to our practitioners, if you don't like a client, don't do that. Okay, Thank and you, I, I, I'd like to add just a technical thing, is when we have our student, uh, we already look at where they are, which state, which country, because let's say we're in India, you know, having a degree with the university, uh, we will also, uh, our student will also be board certified to be able to have liability insurance, and here the World Organization of Natural Medicine will help us to do that. So it's very important that the, the trainee, the, the, the graduate doctor in integrative medicine, know how to, you know, to, to be a, with, belong to a, a professional board and know how to are the limits, you know, and, and this is part of the training. So. I think, Dr. Sarah, you raised a very, very important question and I think, hope we've answered it to your satisfaction. A big round of applause for our panelists. And before we take the next question, I'd like to uh, welcome Dr. Jacqueline on stage with us, who is another expert in energy medicine. Welcome, ma'am. And can we have the mic?